This is a CBS 2 News update. I'm Chris Raggi, and here's what's happening in the news. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman is resigning today following allegations of physical abuse by four women. They tell The New Yorker magazine that Schneiderman became violent during intimate encounters. Schneiderman says he has engaged in role-playing and other consensual sexual activity, but denies assaulting the women. The Manhattan DA's office has opened an investigation. Barbara Underwood will be acting New York Attorney General. Well, the glitz of the Met Gala may have turned ugly for one celebrity. The NYPD says they're looking for members of Cardi B's entourage for assaulting a man outside a Manhattan hotel. Police say the man was trying to get an autograph from the star after the gala. They say when he wouldn't take no for an answer. Three people knocked him to the ground and kicked him in the head. Police say the men ran away. At least two of them are connected to Cardi B. The autograph seeker is in the hospital. Happening today, President Trump will announce whether the U.S. will stay in the nuclear agreement with Iran no negotiated by President Obama and other Western leaders. He faces a May 12th deadline over whether the U.S. will withdraw or not. Mr. Trump has long criticized the deal. On state TV this morning, Iran's president said it would be okay if the U.S. leaves the deal as long as European nations preserve the terms of the agreement. He said the U.S. would be the loser if it pulls out of the deal. He will bring you that announcement. We will rather bring you that announcement live on cbsnewyork.com later today. Times Square is jam-packed with pedestrians, but now some drivers are turning the crossroads of the world into their own personal racetrack, posing a hazard to everyone there. Here's CBS News' Valerie Castro. It's not a racetrack, but these drivers rev their engines as if they were at a starting line, in this case, 46th Street and 7th Avenue in Times Square. Just a few seconds later, after several cars speed by, an NYPD van blocks the lanes and this black car. The driver is pulled out and handcuffed. I swear my life is in the car. My license. Usually the cops, they don't bother us. They'll just let us go, or if they do, they'll stop us, give us tickets. This man goes by the name Free Smoke 100 and is part of the Vengeance Auto Club that organizes those meetups called burnouts or smoke shows named for burning out the tires until they start to smoke. It gives us a sense of freedom, you know, to just be able to just express ourselves in this way. It's just, a, it's just a form of expression. He says the crowds, like those in Times Square, follow them on social media to see the shows. In Times Square, especially, we're, we're, we're going straight. We're not, we're not doing donuts in the middle of the street. We're, we're, not, we're not doing it when someone's crossing the street. So you don't believe this puts anyone in danger? No. But in January, it was two men from a Bronx car club who were arrested after this stunt. An officer tried to pull over their black Mercedes for driving recklessly in Times Square. Instead, the car took off, hitting the officer. Free Smoke 100 says those men are not affiliated with the Vengeance Auto Club and says his members take the tickets as part of the ride. We don't condone what happened in January. If they stop us, uh, or they, or, or you know, they come up to us. We'll 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 pull over. We'll take our tickets and we'll go. That was Valerie Castro reporting as for the man who was handcuffed in that video. We're told he later was let go after being given a ticket for reckless driving. Well, 12 people were hurt when a water taxi hit a floating piece of wood near Battery Park. At least three of the people were taken to the hospital last night with non-life-threatening injuries. The rest treated at the scene. The water taxi was heading from Pier 17 at the South Street Seaport to the Statue of Liberty when passengers went flying. It'll be okay, I just got a nice pack, so it's just a bit sore right now. I wasn't the worst one, there was other people that landed on top of other people. It was a bit of a shock, it was just, we were unprepared for it, weren't we? So it just a sudden shock and threw us off the seat, so it wasn't good. Passengers say at first they thought the jolt was caused by a large wave. Well, it appears robocalls are on the rise, according to Umail, a call monitoring app. About some 3.4 billion robocalls were placed in April, and that is a new record. The surge has grabbed the attention of federal lawmakers. Both the House and Senate held hearings on the issue, passing or introducing legislation to curb all of those annoying calls. And a new era officially begins for the New York Knicks today. The team will officially introduce their new head coach, David Fisdale, during a press conference at Madison Square Garden. Knicks general manager, Scott Scott Perry has called Fisdale a, quote, dynamic coach who will thrive in New York. If you just give him some players now. All right, let's get over to John right now in the Weather Center with your forecast. John? He's a tall dude. Yeah. He's a nice giant dude. And uh, nice glasses. All right, my glasses are on, and they see sun, sun. Sun and 65 at 11, winds out of the southeast at 5. Numbers around the area. You know, with... You know, the exception there of Greenwich, everybody's comfortably in the 60s right now. But it's a little cooler than it was yesterday in the city. So we may not see a repeat of Monday's spectacular 
spectacular 77. We'll shoot for 73 today, uh, but you can see nice and dry. Just a few fair weather clouds this afternoon. Could see some fog overnight tonight. Big ridge of high pressure. So Wednesday looks pretty good too as we work our way through what has been a nice spring week. Thursday, you know, is not a bad day. But late Thursday, we have a chance to showers and thunderstorms. You look at the data, it looks like it's more at night. So if you have evening plans, that could have more of an impact for you. And then it may stall a little bit on Friday. And they want to, you know, the models keep trying to brighten Friday up, which I'm not complaining. 72, and then it's warmer for uh, Mother's Day. Maybe you should get her and wrap up a nice AC unit, Chris. Okay, John, thank you. Well, designer bags and shoes can cost a small fortune, so you want to be sure what you're paying for is the real thing, but that's not so easy. There are knockoffs so sophisticated, they're in a whole new super fake category. CBS News' Hazel Sanchez has the story. We would consider this a super fake or a triple A fake. In other words, a counterfeit bag so good, it can even stump some experts. The construction is very good. Uh, the proportions of the hardware are really great. They didn't get a lot wrong in the manufacturing of it. Graham Wetzbarger is the chief authenticator at the luxury consignment boutique, The Real Real in Soho. The lines between the genuine and the counterfeit are getting closer and closer. Look at these Chanel's. He says a subtle variation in the pink leather was a counterfeit tell. This material is too flat. It's just not of the Chanel quality. What's Barger says even sneakers like these Yeezys are in the super fake category. A pro tip, look at the tips of the laces. The top should be very clean. I feel very silly. I've been a New Yorker all my whole life. I don't get duped like that. But actually, Joanne Montemarano did. She spent $500 on a pair of Louboutins she bought online that turned out to be fake. The crime, the coming, the crime, you should pay a lot of money. Shoemaker Yori Shachikov regularly sees super fake footwear. You see the fool? This is a little thing. This is already fake. He says if you're buying, make sure the shoes come with a second small logo bag with extra heels. This is a wall of four different Louboutin bags. One of them is real and the rest of them are fake. Vintage store owner Lynn Schilling will educate customers to check pocket size and logo placement on the bottom to spot a fake. Because that's the real one. It's getting borderline impossible these days. And at high-end consignment retailer Rebag, CEO Charles Gora developed an exhaustive authentication process. His pros give a final assessment even smelling the leather and listening to the hardware. You know, if the fake is so good that it's unnoticeable, then it's very problematic for everyone. And a word of advice, look carefully for a made in China label. It might not be placed in an obvious spot, but if there is one, you're probably not buying an authentic bag. Hazel Sanchez, CBS 2 News. Dead giveaway. Okay, we'll have much more on CBSNewYork.com, including more on the six things to look for to spot a super fake. Well, that is your CBS 2 News update for right now. I'm Chris Raggy. Join me in a few moments on my Facebook page at Chris Raggy for a live aftercast. I'll talk to you then.